In this video, I'm going over the solution of Doraemon from January Challenge. So, each pair of each pair of sub row and sub column has the same central element. So, let's fix the central element and count the answer for each of the central elements. So for the sample case, which is here, for the central element, we have two pairs. The first pair is simply uh, the sub row is simply the element itself, and the sub column is also the element itself. The second pair is the entire row and the entire column. So, second pair looks like this. So, we find that the answer for this element is 2. And then, uh, for example, for this element, there's only one pair. And that pair is simply just that has the sub row as the element itself, and the sub column is also just the element itself. So, this element has an answer of 1. And we find that the other elements also have an answer of 1. And to find the final answer, simply add up the answers for each individual central element. And you find that the answer is 10, which, yeah, that's the answer. So here I have my code and I have already written uh, most of the input and the output. So right now what you want to do is you want to count the answer uh, you want to loop through each central element and and count the answer so now we just need to implement this function count central which I'll show now So how does function work? Well, um, let's start with, so for this example over here, for example, let's just start with, start with the pair uh, of sub row sub column of itself. Then we try to extend, wow. We can. So at first, let's just say that L is equal to zero. And then you'll have a loop over here. Um, and this loop will basically check if we can extend the sub row and the sub column by one on both sides. Also, this over here, it means that the sub row is um, the i row from j minus l to j plus l, and that the sub column is from uh, the j column from the i minus l from row i minus l to row i plus l. So right now in this loop we want to check if L plus 1 works. So first thing we need to check to make sure that uh, check if our indexes go out of bound. 
to do that, we just make sure that um, j minus l, l plus one, smaller than zero. It, if it's, it has to be greater than or equal to zero, and j plus l plus one uh, has to be small, has to be smaller than. So if it's greater than or equal to them, then we break, and then i minus l plus one. It's smaller than zero. If it's smaller than zero, then we also break. And then i plus l plus one. If that's greater than or equal to n. Then we will break as well. Then we also need to make sure that the new uh, when we extend the subrule and subcom, it will be a palindrome. And if it's not a palindrome, then we will uh, stop extending. So we just check that the top element and the bottom element are the same, and also the same for the left element and the right element. So if this element, is, uh, if the left element is not equal to the right element, or if the top element is not equal to the bottom element, then we basically break. So right now, we have found the maximum L such that the sub row and sub column can form a pair. So now we just return the answer for this um, central element, which is L plus one. So now you might wonder, what is the time complexity of this solution? You might think that maybe the time complexity is, uh, you might think that this might TLE, but actually the time complexity is uh, good enough to get AC. So the first thing to notice is that count central this function works pretty fast. It works in O of the minimum of n and m. And in fact, we can prove that O of minimum of n and m is equal to O of the square root of n times m. Which means that the final complexity is O of n m square root n m, which is fast enough to get AC. But how do we prove this thing? In order to prove it, we can use some simple algebra. So, first, we assume that n is smaller than or equal to n. So minimum of n and m is equal to n, which is equal to the square root of n times the square root of n, which is smaller than or equal to the square root of n times the square root of n. And this is true since because of this assumption. So, and this is just, you can move n and m inside one square root. So, in fact, this algorithm, although it seems kind of like brute force, is actually fast enough. We can actually make this run in uh, O of n times m if we use Maneker's algorithm. Instead of just using our, um, using our function here of extending. So I included the code for the solution which uses Maneker's algorithm in the video description. I've also included a link to this HackerInc article and also this Geeks for Geeks article for those who need to learn Maneker's algorithm.